Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are going to be doing another top 10. These are my top 10 applications for Microsoft Flight Simulator that I find to bring the most enjoyment and most uh, advantages to the simulator. Now this is going to include both some payware and freeware applications. Stick around guys and hopefully you'll find something that you like. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, so the first tool I want to talk about today, guys, is a free tool that just launched back on the 20th as we're waiting for the uh, A320 performance calculator to be completed by Easy Jet Sim Pilot. Um, I've actually seen a couple of videos that he's working on that's going to be a fantastic application, but this is a nice um, fill space until that is complete. And so I'm just going to show you guys live what this one does. This one's pretty cool. So we're going to bring it up here. We're going to set in our departure ICAO. So let's say we're departing from my hometown, Tucson. Takeoff weight, um, I don't know, let's say, I think we have to do this in kilograms, so let's say we're doing 54, 243. Uh, flaps configuration, we're going to do flaps 1, anti-ice will be off for Tucson. Um, air conditioning, your pack system is going to be on. The runway length uh, will be determined by the runway selected, and it is in meters, so we're going to change this to 1-1 one, one left, this is our big runway. And uh, you get your runway heading, runway elevation, your current Q&H, temperature, winds, 2604 knots is actually uh, accurate at the moment. And we're going to hit calculate. And in our case, we can't actually use a flex temp today. Toga is uh, required for uh, our best takeoff performance, but it even gives you the V speeds. Um, now, there have been one or two times here than my little quick test that I did with it. I didn't test it extensively, but there was uh, one or two times out of about 10 uh, where the conditions were not quite accurate um, as far as the V speeds go, but they're like one to two knots off. So nothing that you, know, you would want to gripe about. So anyway, this is just a really handy tool. It beats having to go to a website. It's something that you can have directly on your desktop ready to go when you're when you're all set for your departure. Um, and I just thought that you guys might enjoy this one. And again, it's a completely free application. So a nice little tool to have in your Flight Sim toolbox for the A32NX. Sticking with departures, um, a lot of times when doing general aviation flight, if you guys, for example, don't have your meet our information, or maybe sh maybe you're just jumping in, you kind of just want to screw around and, and you know don't want to take things too seriously, but you like to be able to depart from the correct runway, or maybe you're doing your flight planning and need to know what your runway is. This one is another one that's a really handy. I've used this one uh, a couple of times here, and it's very, very convenient. You simply type in your ICAO, uh, give it gives you the, uh, or you type in your wind direction, and you hit calculate, and it tells you what your departure runway is going to be. Be, as well as listing the other runways that are available at the location. So a uh, very, very quick tool, very simple tool, but actually, again, quite convenient to have depending on uh, what your conditions are and if you're unfamiliar with the airfield that you're at. Um, and this can also be used on your approach. It's the same game. So if you're coming into an area, you don't know what the winds or runway, uh, current active runway is based on the wind information, you can type this in as you're on your descent and determine uh, what runway you're going to be coming in on. So again, just another little very handy tool to have in your, in your toolbox. This next tool is sort of a freeware and a payware. Um, this, to buy the profile, uh, for example, I bought the profile for the A320. Um, it was $12.99 US dollars. Now, what this does is it basically simulates and gives you a full on active uh, first officer. It is absolutely freaking cool. Now, I did a video on this uh, a couple, uh, about a week ago now. You guys can find it on my channel. Um, and it is really, really fun. I was, I was not expecting the immersion enhancement that was truly provided. Um, now, you can have the co pilot basically set up the entire aircraft for you, or you can have him do specific things. The co pilot talks to you. Um, it, even simulates him going out and doing his walk around while you're programming the MCDU as what would happen in, in, in the real world, you know, whichever pilot is not in, you know, 
program the MCDU. That's the one that's going around doing the exterior walk around. Um, he'll walk through the checklist with you. Um, you can have him set to um, do your landing lights, landing gear, all that good stuff. He calls out your V speeds, calls out your rotation. Uh, so I was really, really excited. I think the most exciting point for me was uh, at takeoff. Um, at takeoff, you know, for the first time flying the A320, we get rolling down the runway and he calls out 80 knots and he calls out V1. And at, um, as soon as we had positive rate, he called out positive rate gear up next, you know, you watch the gear handle come up. Um, and there's a bunch of customizations that you can also set too, such as, you know, turning the lights off. And once we breach 10,000 feet, the co-pilot turned off the exterior lights, you know, the landing lights, etc. Um, it was a very, very immersive experience that I really enjoyed. You can also set things like a uh, taxi speed limit. So let's say you set your taxi speed limit to 25 knots, you know, at, or ground speed to 25 knots, excuse me. Um, once you breach that, he'll yell at you. He'll be like, watch your taxi speed, you know, let you know that you're taxing too fast. It was just a really, really cool, um, very immersive, very powerful tool. Um, walks through um, all kinds of different checklist settings. Now, this is the main menu that starts up when you first load in. And then as you um, progress through the flight, whether it be a cruise or coming up on top of descent, this checklist will automatically change uh, based on what the next phase of flight is. It is a very, very well done. It even has voice activation to it too, where you can actually execute using your microphone, different commands and communicate with the co-pilot essentially, um, or your first officer, excuse me. I keep saying co-pilot. Um, really, really awesome application. I've only used it twice so far. Um, you know, obviously busy with other things. Um, and uh, every time that I've gotten to use it, I love it. I am so happy that I got to be a part of this application and was very, very and, and, and thoroughly impressed. Uh, the first time I used it, I was actually um, on YouTube recording. I, I used it from a first time experience as you guys know that I do very often. Um, so I didn't really have any experience with it. I didn't really, everything that I was showing on the YouTube video was me experiencing it for the first time. Um, and I was blown away. I was so, so stoked about this, you know, and yes, again, that profile for the A320 was 1299 uh, US dollars and it was worth every freaking penny of it. I, it completely changed the experience of, of flying the A320 for me. I was, I, I just can't stress enough guys. Please, please, if, if you have the ability, give this one a shot. I promise you'll enjoy it in the A320. And there's a couple other aircraft that are currently available. Uh, I can't remember if he lists them here. I don't think he does. Oh, here, let's go to read more. I can't remember if they are all listed here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, here, we can go here real quick because I want to show you guys. Uh, there are three or four different aircraft, if memory serves. I think the CRJ is one, but let's find out just to make sure. Uh, let's see here. Let's do paste and go. And let's go to downloads. Um, nope, that's for the whole ship package. Let's go here. There we go here. So here's our aircraft that are currently supported. 737 by the Bradrock, which I don't do, but a Sobo 787, a Sobo 747 CRJ, and the Fly-By-Wire A320 from Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I love it. And I'm sorry, it is $14.99. My, my apologies on the, on the price point there. But anyway, still, I promise you'll find it to be worth every penny once you get up and run it. Next one is another payware, and that is FS Realistic Core. Much like we saw in XP Realistic, uh, it's by the same developers, you can edit and change or enhance the sounds of the external aircraft or internal aircraft, internal and external sounds, excuse me, and then also add things such as shaking, vibration, and 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 things of those nature, gear drag, sounds. Um, other, I mean, you guys can see the list here. This is just some of them. This isn't even kind of half. Um, now, the one thing I will say about FS Realistic and XP Realistic Realistic is it takes time. You really have to take your time, dial it in. You can set profiles based on well, the aircraft that you're flying. Um, it, it definitely is a time consumer um, to get it tweaked the way you like. Um, I'm not going to hide that by any means. I would not call this a plug and play. Now, the cool thing is there are pre-created profiles and community created profiles that you can just simply switch to if, if you don't feel like doing the legwork. And a lot of them are really fantastic. 
And I have preached many, many times in the simulator. Um, for example, when we get an aircraft that flies fantastically, that looks fantastic, but the sounds are leaving a lot to be desired, it really can crush the immersion. Um, because you just, as you're, as you're looking around and, and your, your mind is expecting to hear certain things and those sounds are missing, it can really take you out of that immersive experience that we're looking for in simulation. Um, and FS Realistic Core is definitely one of those applications that uh, greatly enhances the ability to customize those sounds and bring further immersion into the simulator. Again, it's 1999 US dollars, so obviously that is something that you have to truly consider for yourself. Me personally, um, I still enjoy it quite often. Um, I haven't used the latest version to, uh, to be completely honest, but I was always very impressed with it every time that I have used it. So um, I wanted to make sure to bring this one to the list. Yes, it is a payware, but I wanted you guys to make sure uh, that you were aware of it and what my thoughts were on FS Realistic. Next on our list, we have Top of Descent Calculator and Pause. This is an incredibly handy tool, especially for long flights. What it does is it obviously calculates your top of descent by populating the necessary fields. Um, and then you have the option here that makes it really handy where as you approach your top of descent, it will actually pause the simulator for you. Again, this can be extremely handy if you are, you know, up, you're up at cruise altitude, you've done everything you can do and you're in that boring phase of flight. And let's say you want to go watch a movie with the family, cook some dinner, whatever, got to go run an errand. You're you're able to do that and the simulator will actually be paused once you hit your top of descent and keep you from missing your glide slope lines. Um, it is extremely handy. I found myself using it a lot. It gets me out of the uh, out of the room for a little bit where I can go spend time with the kids and the fam or just do other things that I'm interested in doing without uh, having to worry about missing my next step. Um, so I just wanted to quickly run through this one, guys, and show it off to you. I think it's extremely handy to have on board, um, and it's uh, it's just really nice to have if you don't want to be locked down to your chair for the entire flight. I know some of you uh, like to make some of those god-crazy 8, 10, 16-hour flights, and uh, this is a neat tool to have on board if that's something that you're looking to do. This next one is one that I use extremely frequently. This is called Shift Z Stats, and I get asked about this one all the time. Um, in your toolbar, you will see a Z icon. Once that is installed in your community folder, you simply hit Shift Z, and it will bring you up a uh, bar of your stats. Now, this is only the first frame. It actually brings up a couple. I think you have to hit cycle it three times till to actually turn them off because it changes. But it, for, for example, in this screenshot, we can see it gives you your latitude, longitude, coordinates, your current altitude, magnetic heading, your current airspeed, wind direction, and speed, your frame rates. I know that's a big one for a lot of us. And the current G load on the aircraft, as well as fuel and your current sim rate. Um, it is a really, really handy tool. You wouldn't think you'd use it as much as you do, but I promise the more you get uh, familiar with it, or not familiar because it's pretty black and white, but I would say once you get in the habit of using it, you'll find it as one of those indispensable tools that you really enjoy having. Um, I would think where I use it the most would be wind direction and... Um, uh, frame rate. You know, if I start noticing stuttering or weird behavior in the sim, I'll quickly pop shift C stats and I uh, just see what the sim rate uh, or, the, or the frame rate is doing and versus having to turn on the developer mode or use some other, you know, means to uh, track your frame rate. It's really handy. Just a quick tap shift Z on your keyboard, get what you need, shift Z again and again, and you're off. So anyway, I've really enjoyed this one. I've been using it since the day it was released and I will never let it leave my toolbox as long as it's never broken. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Sticking with our guys over at Ambitious Pilots here, um, we have the toolbar pushback. I have tried out so many different pushback utilities over uh, the span of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Everything from, uh, what was it, Better Pushback, <laughs> or no, Pushback Helper. Better Pushback was uh, X-Plane 11. I always get that mixed up. Uh, pushback Helper to Flight, Re or a Pushback Recorder to, I think there was one other one, Pushback Express, and then I think I finally settled on Toolbar, toolbar Pushback. Uh, even has some voice uh, interactive playback, um, meaning that we don't necessarily give the voice commands, but you can hear the co or the pilot and, and uh, ground talking back and forth as they execute the different commands. They'll even tell you things like, you know, release your parking brake, et cetera. Um, and it, again, that audio that we were talking about earlier that tends to be missing with certain scenarios, this is another way to enhance that immersion with a very handy tool. You can even use your rudder pedals to actually control the pushback itself. Uh, you can drag the uh, pushback menu off off your screen. So if 
you're doing recording or, or we just want a more immersive experience and you don't want it in your window, uh, you have that ability as well. Um, so again, very black and white, pretty easy to use. The nice thing about it, it also controls, as you saw that screenshot there, it controls your jetways, your catering carts, your... Um, uh, baggage loaders and things like that. The thing that I like about those, um, it also has a ability that you can toggle that will prevent the baggage loaders or catering carts or things like that from leaving the aircraft until you tell them to. Um, so if you're, you know, really wanting to keep everything around and simulate that time frame of how long it really takes, you have that option. And then when you are ready, you decide when the baggage loaders and, and, and catering carts, you know, move on down the road. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Here we have another tool that I have been using exclusively uh, for all of my flight recording since I got it. Uh, Sky Dolly is an absolutely awesome flight recorder and playback utility. Um, it gives you the ability to obviously both record and playback your flight. You can save the flight for later uh, activation, meaning you you have you know, say you want to save your aircraft. You're on your glide slope, you're on your final or your initial fix, you're ready, and you just want to keep practicing that approach over and over again. Uh, you can actually save the location every time you hit the record button, that location, the aircraft position, location, configuration is all saved. And so let's say tomorrow you want to come back and you want to do that same approach again. You simply load up Sky Dolly, hit the play button, boom, your aircraft is moved and off you go. And, you know, even though, you know, ideally you would want to keep the same aircraft, you actually don't have to. So let's say I do it one morning in the TBM 930 and the next day I want to try that same position in the Cessna Citation Longitude, we can do that and it will still take you to that to that location. Now, some of the configuration things I have noticed don't always set quite right because remember, it's remembering airspeed and things like that. So that is something to consider. But um, you can obviously reconfigure the aircraft and then set it up and, and save a new location in the aircraft. One of the, but uh, I use this all of the time to also pause the simulator. I'll, let's say there's a certain spot that uh, I want to get a cool screenshot on for my, you know, YouTube tiles. You know, um, I use Sky Dolly for that. I'll record the aircraft position. Then once I get that perfect screenshot, that angle that I want, you can actually pause the simulator, the pause the playback. And, you know, you can manipulate your camera and get that, that screenshot just right without having to worry about any menus popping up or things like that. Um, and then simply jump back into the cockpit and hit play and continue your flight. Um, the other really neat thing that it does is if you are, for example, I'll use the example of, uh, acrobatics or let's say you want to do, um, say you want to do a blue angel show, right? In the F 18 and you, you go up in your flight. Okay. The first time out, you're going to go up and you're going to hit the record button. You're going to do your takeoff. You're going to do your loops and your spins and your turns and your banks, right? Well, let's say you want to do that again, but you'd like to simulate a formation flight it actually has the ability to add aircraft now and, and it will add it in the finger four position uh, in close formation. You can add them to the left and right wing. You can tell you, you can, you can be the one, maybe that's following uh formation, um, following your air, your initially recorded aircraft. It's a really, really cool thing. I think you can add up to three or four flights if memory serves uh, to fly in formation with you um, and then turn around and record again. And like they're right there on that screen. Let's see here. Let me uh, let me go back to that one. I just saw the one I wanted you guys to see. Where did it go? Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, that one. So, oh, I thought I could grab it. Do I have to grab it from here? Let's let me find it because I I want you guys to see that. There we go. So here's your formation. Uh, controls here. So from here, you can, this will be the recorded aircraft, and then you can select simply by clicking on one of these, which aircraft you want to, uh, or what position you want to add. So whether you want to add a trail or, you know, uh, an, a line abreast, you know, and then you can actually change their uh, distance to the aircraft, to the recorded aircraft. Remember, so it's all based on this aircraft, and then you can choose, you can be the one flying one of these aircraft here. Uh, it's really, really neat. And, it, and so far it's worked flawlessly for me. I was messing around with it in the Hawk the other day, uh, thinking about doing, you know, trying to put together some sort of cool cinematic air show for you guys. I thought that'd be kind of fun, something different for the channel. Um, and I was playing around with this and it works really, really well. I was very impressed with it. So you can have a lot of fun with it, especially if you really want to practice formation flying. And what I mean by that, so the, the scary part about formation flying, not to digress too much, but it, let's say I'm flying this aircraft here, okay? And we're doing one of those Blue Angels type air shows, right? 
my job is to stare at this aircraft. I, I, I have to have my aircraft in a specific position, find a specific uh, visual point that I'm supposed to be watching, keep it within a certain distance of me. And all, my entire flight, I am staring at that spot. I am trusting my lead pilot to fly and keep me safe because my eyes never leave this aircraft not through takeoff, landing, et cetera, you know, depending on what your formation is. Anyway, I know I got I went on a little bit of a tangent with this one, but it really is a lot of fun to mess around with and uh, can really test your piloting skills. So uh, anyway, check out Sky Dolly. Again, this is completely free, and I have tried out multiple flight recorders, and this one by far works the best. This is an old one that doesn't need to be used quite as often anymore, but it is called MD Adjust Aircraft Position. There have been times where I have been spawned into the simulator, and my aircraft is right up against a building or let's say it's right up against a gas tank and I don't want it there. Or another great example of how I've used this before is if I'm wanting to spawn in the water with a seaplane, you know, you can make sure that you have your floats on and you'll obviously spawn on a parking spot. But then you can use this this uh, handy tool and uh, move your aircraft around um, right into the water and uh, start your start your flight from that location without having to start up, taxi over to the water, or fly to the water, land, and then, and then take your flight as you initially planned. Uh, it will also save locations. You can teleport to different locations, as you can see this button here. Um, really, really cool um, different tool. Again, it's another one that just, it will save. Um, you can even set your uh, speed, pitch, and bank angles and all that stuff. Uh, it's a really, really awesome tool. I really enjoy using this. Um, it's very helpful um, when trying to put your aircraft in a position where you wouldn't normally be able to fly it from um, another perfect example that would might be like a helicopter or an aircraft you know in a bush flight you know if you wanted to if you want to spawn your aircraft in somewhere that Microsoft Flight Simulator won't allow you to do this is a tool that you can do that with so I wanted to make sure to share that um, it's an older tool it hasn't I don't think it's been updated in quite a while uh, but I tested it out before doing this recording and it worked just fine still so anyway and finally, last on my list here is the MSFS mobile companion app. And it's exactly what sounds like. You can use this from an iPad, a cell phone, or just another browser window, a laptop. And it allows you to control virtually all aspects of your aircraft directly from your mobile device. Um, everything from the autopilot to comms to your map. Um, now, as far as the flight plan information goes, um, I haven't used that in a while because my understanding is, unless this has changed, and I don't think it has, uh, you do have to load your flight plan into Microsoft Flight Simulator prior to hitting the fly button, where I typically like to program my flight plan from directly inside the cockpit of the aircraft. I just like that that immersive experience. One of the more enjoyable parts for me uh, when it comes to simulators is actually setting the aircraft up from a cold and dark state, um, as you normally would in the real world. Um, so anyway, um, I don't really need to talk a ton on this one. Um, it's got different profiles for the specific aircraft. Many of them are still there. Again, it's another one that hasn't been updated in a while, and that kind of breaks my heart. <laughs> Hint, hint, nudge, nudge the developer. Um, one of the things that does tend to happen, there is a bug listed here um, that has happened to me. It's I get uh, mixed results on whether or not this happens, and it's this right here. Um, so I'll let you guys pause the screen. Feel free to read that. Um, but it's uh, it I don't it doesn't happen to me all the time, but I have seen evidence of this in the past. So, uh, but it just happens when you're trying to go back to the main menu. So. Um, um, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, breaking anything during the flight itself. It's when you're actually leaving and, and going back to the main menu, it'll dump the aircraft or the SIM, uh, back to the desktop. And again, it doesn't happen to me all the time, but I have seen it happen. So I want you guys to be aware of that. All right, guys. So that is 10 of my uh, most en enjoyable, most used applications for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I want to stress that's just 10 of them. Uh, I have more coming. We'll definitely be doing another video about this kind of stuff later in the week uh, where we'll get into more of the tools and, and applications that I use uh, for increasing the enhancement of Microsoft Flight Simulator. A perfect example of that will be NeoFly. We'll be talking about that later in the week as we do another one of these because, as you guys know, I have been searching, doing mods, tools, add ons expansions and things like that sent for Microsoft Flight Simulator since its launch. Um, and uh, so I, I've got quite the book load that we can go through that I still use to this day and, and find quite a bit of enjoyment out of. Anyways, folks, let me know what you guys think down in the description below. Let me know of any gems that you guys are aware of that we can talk on. And as always, stay safe and healthy. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you in the next one.